Argonauts. Uh, this is a Kickstarter for me. I actually kickstarted this. Uh, personally, was kind of excited about it. I'll be honest, the artwork kind of got me into it. I like the theme of Jason and the Argonauts. I like those old um, movies, I guess, and legends, if you will. Uh, they're very fascinating. A lot of adventure in them. I remember those movies growing up. So Argonauts had me uh, pretty interested in it. I'm not disappointed in a lot of ways. The artwork is phenomenal. I mean, if you have not played this or have this, go on the Geek and actually look at these this artwork. I mean, Hercules himself is, is fantastic. Uh, the production value was very good. I wish the cards were a tad bit thicker. That would have been nice, but it is what it is. It's a minor quibble. Very, very good. Um, I like how you don't have to have cubes galore there's just a little track on the board that's nice i like the design the graphic design is fantastic um i don't know the designer of this game uh, his name is well there's three of them and i can't pronounce any of them but i would say these people are going places this is a good game now when i first played it the first time maybe second time i was like well at least the first time i was like oh this is not very good and but then something in the back of my head was like i need to play this again so I did, and each time I've played it, I've liked it more, and I've got farther on the track. I've almost made it back. I was one away um, from winning the game on easy, on easy. The default in this game is hard or difficult. There's a medium or normal, and then there's an easy. I, I was playing the, the default one. I saw in the back of the rule book that there was an easy. I said, well, heck, I'll try that out because I didn't get very far. Um, and I got further and further and further, so it helps out. Um... This is a solid game. There is a lot of luck. You'll be rolling a 12-sided die quite a bit. But your cards and everything is going to be able to mitigate this. I mean, one minor quibble, and I, I'm not a game designer, so I don't have the probability worked out in my head. You have to commit your people before you roll the dice, which maybe has some kind of pressure or luck involved in it. But I almost wish I could rule this first and then commit the people I wanted to to defeat it. I think the game would be easier that way, uh, and I may even I may even in the future play it that way and just see how and see how it goes. But that's not the rules. But so you have to commit your people, and a lot of times you'll commit nine power, and you roll a one or a two, and you're like, oh I, well, I overdid that. Perhaps that's the way you know these battles were. You commit people, and sometimes you win by a landslide, and sometimes you don't. So. But when it comes to a game and it feels like every ounce counts, every little number counts, that sometimes if you overdo it and you roll too low, you're kind of screwing yourself. But if you kind of hedge your bets and you consistently roll high, then I don't want this to determine whether I win or lose. I want me to determine that. So that's kind of the one thing I probably would change, but I don't know how that would balance the game out. I have fun playing this, and it plays quick. This is a, a game you can solo. Um, you can have more people play. And, and, and these cards, there's a lot of them that can be a little overwhelming, but after a game or two, you start to see how they work together if you're soloing it. If if, if you if you're playing four player, you only have four cards or four people to work with. It's not as difficult, and there'll be a lot. There's going to be a lot of discussion in this game. You're going to be talking about each turn a lot. It's not necessarily going to be like pandemic where somebody's telling you what to do. There could be some of that in this if somebody has a lot more experience, but when you exhaust a card, you have to then play another card down to push it to the rest, and then another card would push the rest back into your hand. So the majority of the time, even though you have four cards that you start out with, you're really only going to have two in your hand because you're going to have an exhausted one and a rested one. It's, it's, very, it's very unique and, and very cool how you, you know this guy might not be very useful here, but he's very useful there. And, you know, it's not just Jason and Hercules who are the best players. Yes, they're the best fighters, perhaps, or at least Hercules is. Um, but are they the best characters? I don't know. Not really. I mean, you use the scouts a lot. You can use the mystic a lot. Uh, the sailors can be very important when you're out in the open sea. Uh, so everybody kind of has their moment to shine, which was really neat. I, I like this game. Um, I, I've played it a lot since I got it. And it, I like games I can solo. I like games that are cooperative. Um, I like games with great bits. I like games with great art. The art is just phenomenal in this game. 
I mean, I'd put the art in this game against any art in any game I've ever seen. That's Go online and check out these pictures. Just phenomenal. I love it. If I was designing a game, whoever drew this game, I mean, this guy has to be on the top of your list. Just phenomenal. Um, the game works. It's hard. Um, I'm getting better. Like I said, so it shows me that there's a game here and not just the luck fest. Because you're going to be rolling this die a lot. And you're going to want to write the game off because of this die. No, don't do it. There's die. Dice, you will be you are rolling one single 12-sided die quite a bit. And there is some luck. There's some pressure luck. There's some um, roll the die and you just get screwed and you're never going to win. If you roll a little bit better, perhaps you're going to do a little bit better. But you're not going to win or lose based on this die. Well... Maybe. If you were just phenomenally rolling exactly what you needed, perhaps you could you know, attribute a lot of it to this. But that it's gonna you're gonna roll this die enough that it's gonna even out. And you're gonna have some good rolls and some bad. Uh, it kinda stinks when you have too many good rolls in a row and then too many bad ro rolls in a row, like that can really put you back. But the game is quick. I mean I can play it in less than thirty minutes. The game itself is gonna extend out with the conversation. You can totally play this. I don't know about non-gamers necessarily, but if they play the Ticket to Ride-ish type games, because you're if you play four player, you're only really gonna have four cards, and you're cooperatively helping people. I think cooperative games are a little bit easier to play with other people or newer gamers, um, because you, you're playing together. So like a lot of times you just jump in, start playing. Here's how it goes, and we're working together. Let's talk through. You can get into an alpha player like that, but they still have to make decisions about their players and what. And they should be saying, oh, I can do this. This guy is good at that. Let's do that. Maybe, perhaps, you can get into a situation where it's like, okay, I'm doing the same thing over and over. Um, I think this game plays phenomenally uh, solo. So, if you're a solo gamer, this is a great game to add. In the pandemic vein, where you're going to be playing multiple characters and doing that sort of thing. This is the keeper to me. This is, this is when I do the cooperative games, this is a game that's going to be pretty high on the list, I think. I like this game. I recommend it. If if you like and appreciate well-produced board games cooperatively that you can play solo or with other people, this is a good game for you. Highly recommend Argonauts. Components for the game. Let me show you the hero cards first. These are pretty good. The artwork is just fantastic. There's Hercules. And you're going to get... Uh, 17 of these in the base game. You're going to have one who's not in. She'll swap places with Hercules at some point in the game. Um, you're going to have these relics and treasures, which are really thick cardboard. That will just basically boost stats. A lot of they're going to do. Uh, some of them will give you coins. But these are really thick. You're going to have the market tiles, which are really thick cardboard. Basically, they're going to look like this, and for the most part, they're going to give you food, or they're going to give you resources. You are going to have the board, which is fantastic, and the board is double-sided. It has really great artwork. This is a picture of the front of the box. This is the artwork that's on the back of the box. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. But, of course, you're never going to see it. You're going to see this map layout. You have the map layout here, which is just a big circle that you're going around, oh, sort of a circle, but you're going to end up back where you started. You're going to have these little tiles that are going to represent your rations, your argonauts, your gold, your resources, and your favor of the gods. And then you're going to get, I think this might be a Kickstarter thing, but this is the ship, because there's a track here on the board. But you have these tiles that you flip over when you take damage, and you can probably see it here best. But your ship will take damage, and the artwork shows that it takes damage, which is kind of neat. So that's a really cool aspect. You're going to have these cards, which so we're going to have green back, exploration. The other one's going to be what's called Argo, car, Argo cards, which are blue. But they're all going to kind of look the same. You're going to see some great artwork on these cards. Just fantastic. And a lot of this, a lot of this game is going to be rolling dice. Um, not necessarily a bad thing, because you can mitigate that. But so... Well, as you draw, some pirates might show up, a dead calm, somebody might get sick, etc. So, um, I think these are meant to help you. These are, you know, a little more like you have to do something at those. You're gonna get these little cardboard things. They're gonna show who's exhausted and who's resting. Um, don't 
really need these, but they're really cool to have, and they add to the game. And then you're going to have these oversized city cards. You can see the size of a normal card here. And the city cards kind of neat. The pictures are going to be all the same on them, but what you can do in every different city is a little bit different, and the rules might be a little bit different. You can see, you know, hearing is one, two, three, four to seven is one ration, four to ten is one ration, eight to eleven. So I mean, it's a little bit different. So that's kind of neat when you go to each city. And then what's really super neat are these what I call bosses or bad guys. You get the harpies here. Maybe something happens when you go there and there's a victory condition, defeat condition. The artwork is just fantastic on these. That's the front of the box and the back of the board. I mean, these are just wonderful. And you'll face these people as you go through the game. And the artwork is just incredible. Uh, most of them have a victory condition and defeat. I mean, and these are oversized once again. These are just, these are, you know, it's a regular card there. So, oversized. Reminds me of Sentinels of the Multiverse the extra cards that came out. So these are really neat, fantastic. The components are all great. I didn't notice any errors or mistakes that you come sometimes see in Kickstarters. Um, the cards, the artwork is just, is just phenomenal. Phenomenal artwork. Uh, for the most part, I don't really have any complaints. These cards could have been a little thicker, but they're rounded off and, and I don't know, they're good. I really like them. Uh, so the components, A++ for me. Biggest flaw in this game is probably going to be this rule book. When I first read it, I almost threw it because I was like, what is going on here? After I realized how simple this game is to play, I realized why they made the rule book like this. So your first read through, you might be, what is going on? And then it makes sense. So basically, I mean, the rule book has fantastic art on it. it. It's a lot of words. There's some pictures in here, but not a lot. This is the rules of the game right here. It's about three paragraphs. You're going to move the ship. You pay a ration. You do the activity, whether it's green, blue, or red. And you have to use your hero cards to, to do it. So that's the game. And I was just kind of like, what are they doing here? And they go in this long explanation about how the heroes work. They do all the powers, and they tell you how the port cities work, because none of those things matter. It's a reference book to go to the cities and the heroes and how they work. The best way to play this game is to move the ship, pay your ration, read the part about the port city and how to do it. And then when you get to the red mark, learn how to do the, 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 legendary, the legendary guys, the, the bosses, if you will. And then when you get to the blue, learn how to do an Argo one. And, and let the first game just be a learning experience, and you will learn this game piece of cake because it's so simple. You're going to get it. You exhaust a card, you move it down, pretty easy. So, in hindsight, 2020, I got to say I do like the rule book. Although, you got to go into it with the right mentality. There are some historical notes in the back about Jason the Argonauts. And there's an expansion, at least, that came with mine. I'm not sure if it's a Kickstarter exclusive, but it's in the rule book. It doesn't really tell you necessarily how to incorporate it, but it's pretty good. And there's a picture of the components. One of the problems I had when I was putting it together was I just grabbed everything. I didn't realize there was an expansion in there. So I just mixed everything together, and I wanted to pull the expansion out. And the cards aren't marked you know, for the expansion, which I didn't like. But other than that, uh, good job. An unconventional rule book but a good one on a second viewing. How to play this game. Okay, so you're always gonna have 16 of these cards in play. She's always gonna be set off to the side. She's gonna come in later when a card tells you to, and she'll, take, she'll swap places with Hercules, but everybody's gonna have four. So if you're playing solo, you just play four squads, if you will. If four players, everybody's gonna get a squad, two player, everybody gets two, et cetera, et cetera. There always has to be four in play. Now, each player can use one card per turn for different things. Uh, let me show you what the cards look like. So, the cards are going to have skills on them. You're going to have a power, if you will. What they are, so it might be scout, warrior, mystic, etc. And the gods, so whether they like this god or dislike this god. Or, I guess the god likes or dislikes them, to be more blunt. 
for the most part, you're going to start out here at the game, and you're going to go through each of these spaces on the board and do something. And I'll, I'm not going to play through the game, but I'm going to show you what each different space does. So the, every time you go to a new space, the first thing you do is you reduce a ration. If you don't have a ration, it's down to zero. You have to start getting rid of the Argonauts. Okay? So in a city, what you'll do is you'll find, and the cities are the green ones with the name of the city on it, you'll go to the card, and you can always perform two actions out of however many you might you have two options for so you can draw a merchant card or exhaust a mystic exhaust a diplomat and do etc or exhaust a scout so i'll just go through these really quickly so the trader draw a mer merchant card all you do is draw this and then you can do it and these are pretty easy to understand so food is a dollar um you have up to three if you have this, it means you can draw more of these. You draw two of these and see what they do. But for the most part, just keep it easy. You would give up a coin, give up a coin, and you grab a ration. And that would be it. Put that on the bottom of the pile, or a discard pile, or whatever it is you do. Uh, just to give you another example here. Exhaust a mystic, pay a gold, and gain a favor. So if you look at these cards, let me find one really fast. Okay, so this one right here says Mystic. It has this keyword on it, Mystic. So you just put it into Exhaust. This says Rest and Exhaust. You put it into the Exhaust. You ex exhausted the Mystic. That's all you have to do. Not complicated. Pay a gold. Boom. And you get a favor of the gods. Now remember, normally, you could only do two of these. So this would work the same way. You would exhaust a Diplomat, just like I did the Mystic. And then you would roll a dice... Now, here's a Diplomat, and here is the Diplomat icon. So whatever dice roll I had, I would add that to it, okay? And then I would get the goods based on the die roll. So die roll plus is Diplomat. Or I could draw one of these exploration cards by just kind of scout, and then do what it says. And some of these will say, like, you have to pick whether you're going to use your guys' you know, you can use up. Four people can be used per turn. I've already used one, so I have three. So if I was going to do this card, I would have three people either to fight it or use stealth, because I'm getting ambushed. And then I would have to commit these people, you know, etc., whatever, to the fight. They would be exhausted. And then I would roll the die to see what the difficulty level is. I had to commit them first, then roll the difficulty, and then you also go to this chart which has the gods listed on it based on what eight is Aphrodite. You look at each one. If it's blue, it adds one to, to their skills. If it's red, it would subtract one. So a little bit of luck there. But if I pass it, I would get the victory here, the coin. If I defeat it, two of my guys died. And that just means I would go down this track. It doesn't mean I lose any of these cards. These people are still there. Um, so that's kind of how that works. And you would put that in a discard pile. And that's how a city works. So whenever a city works, you can do two of these four options. If I go to a blue space on the board, I would have to pay my ration, and I would draw one of these Argo cards and just kind of do whatever it says. So this one says Bountiful Waters. I would roll a 12-sided die, exhaust one or more of my sailors. I would add the roll to my whoever I used or exhausted for this, add up their sailor, if you look here, your sailor icon. So I would add, if I use this guy, uh, Tippus, I would add three to my dice roll. So I'm mitigating my dice roll. Now look at this chart. One to four, no catch. Five to get one ration, nine, 11, two, and 12, you would get three. But you never can go above nine. So I probably wouldn't use enough people to get any further than, say, eight, because two is just going to be wasted. And that's how those cards work. Fairly easy. You're going to have these red ones on the board. You're never going to move backwards. You're always going to move in a row. I'm just showing you how it works. Whenever you move to a space, the next available space, you pay a ration. Now, on the red spaces, you're going to fight what's called these legendary creatures. And they look intimidating. Uh, bait to be, so reduce rations by one. So just by going to that space, you're going to lose another ration. Uh, these are sort of thematic. Uh, the sirens... Um, you would lose one Argonaut, so you're losing one of your crew. Once again, Argonauts are not the cards, it's this track right here. And then you would choose whether you want to fight her. This time you don't roll the die. 
it's nine of those icons or six of those icons and four of this. So warriors and stealth or nine. And you look at your cards, everybody look at their cards because they can exhaust one card and see if you can get that amount. Now sometimes you'll get these relics or treasures that can add to the rolls and those can help you out. Um, otherwise, if you can't do it, you're going to fail and you're going to get the fail condition. So let's see what we have here. If you victory, you gain a relic. If you defeat, you lose two Argonauts and two rations. You don't want to lose these. These are, I mean, these are, are how you're going to lose the game. This is a very tough game. But that's how it is. You would just try to get more than that number. So some of your guys, if you look, this guy is, you know, really good at a, quite a few things, but it's only ones. Or a guy like this, if you need the sailor icon, he's three. He's really good. Let's take a look at, uh, here's Jason, of Jason and the Argonauts, which is the game we're playing. So 2-2-1-1, two, two, one, one, pretty good. And then you have Hercules, who is an extremely good warrior, so 4. Uh, and once you play the game, you're going to know which one of these legendary guys, these things come up in order. So you're going to kind of be able to plan out, I know I'm going to need to hold back 9. Because these guys are also going to have powers at the bottom that are going to be able to help you. And you can always exhaust them for that. So let's say you needed that. We were fighting this monster. And I needed, let's say I chose I was going to go nine here. Well, this character doesn't give me any of that icon. But if you exhaust her to add two to a selected hero skill for this round. So I could actually boost, if I exhausted him, I could actually add two to Hercules' strength. Um, made that from a four to a six, even though I don't have the matching icon. So you can make other people useful that way. And some of these guys will you work better together as, as they're utilized. And that's how that one is used. So you're always going to have either a blue Argo, a red. You're going to fight one of these legendary people, or you're going to be in a city um, doing the city actions that are listed here. And the idea is you want to keep the rations up. You want if you get four damage to your ship, you lose. If your Argonauts gets to zero, you lose. Um, so there's a lot of ways to lose. There's one way to win. Make it all the way back around to where you started. I should mention that you can find the Golden Fleece when you fight the dragon. There's a second one provided for the easy mode, and this just adds Argonauts to this track. So it wasn't as fantastic as I had hoped it would be, or as powerful. That's Argonauts. This is a cooperative game, and it's a game that um, is pretty difficult. There's some luck, there's a lot of dice rolling, but there's a lot of mitigating that, and I've gotten better at it, which tells me that it's not all luck, because I've played it, I think, six times already. And I'm getting better. I'm closer. I got all the way here last time, which is one away from winning on easy mode. So there you have it. Who should buy this game? Fans of cooperative games. Fans of great art and great components. Uh, if you want a well-produced game, if you want a well-produced cooperative game, if you want a game that's a cooperative game that's simple to play, now, I'm going to hesitate to say this, but it's going to play kind of like Pandemic, only in the vein, before everybody jumps at me, that it's simple. You move from a spot, you're going to do something, okay? You have three or four options you can do on your turn. Other than that, it's not Fire Rescue or, or, or Dead Man 10 Hotels where it's just a clone of Pandemic. This is not Pandemic. This is different. But it's like it in the fact that there's four things you can do when you go to a city, sometimes two. There is, you know, you're, you're, you're hamstrung by your cards. Uh, you have in, These cards give you individual powers, like Pandemic. But this game can be played with, with new players. You can have a great time with it. There's a lot of discussion that will come out of it, the best way to use your cards, based on what you have available. So it can become a really neat conversational game if you want to get the group talking a little bit. I will say this is an instant buy. If you're okay with die, a die being rolled, and you having to mitigate this. And this is going to become, if you're playing a four player game, a fifth player. It's not going to, you're not going to win or lose based on this most of the time. 99% of the time. It's possible, I guess. You just have fantastic rolls, but any dice rolling games will be like that. If you're okay with a dice roll and you're willing to give this game three or four plays, 
I think you can appreciate what's in this box. I think you really like it. I was at the beginning, first playthrough, I was kind of riding it off with this, and then I kept playing and, and did better and better. And that's not dice. That's me. So if you're into cooperative games, this is a must buy. Sorry if you end up buying and don't like it, but I think it's a must buy. I'm gonna put it up there with the top cooperative games. You know, it, it's hard because you're going to have Pandemic, Fire Rescue. I haven't played Police Precinct, but I know that I've heard about it. You know, so many of those Dead Man Tell Tales, they play so similar to Pandemic that, you know, how do you separate them? I guess if you like Pandemic, it's a little bit more of a puzzle, or you like Fire Rescue with a little bit more of the dice rolling. Um, a little more luck involved, if you will. With um, Argonauts, this is something different. It reminds me of that Atlantis Falling game where it's just something different. And this is good. You're going to enjoy this. So give this one a play. This one will stay in my collection and I will be keeping it. 